All right. So we start with the update from the Interchain team. Uh, Susanna, you want to kick it off? Um, yeah, so uh, there is a blog post out um, which just highlights what's in the 7.1 release. Um, so if you want to read it, feel free. Um, and the other point uh, was about um, whether we should extend the end of life for the V4 line. So uh, I just put some stats here. Um, this is from the start of May. So there are actually two chains, at least I know of, who actually upgraded to V7. Uh, maybe actually three now. So the, this is slightly up, out of date. But um, there are a lot of chains still uh, actually on their V4 or you know, slightly unsupported lines. So we're considering extending the end of life of V4. Um, when is the end of life for V4 at the moment? It's in August. All right, yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know if anyone here has any strong opinions or views on that. Um, it's not strong, but I mean, I guess so. But I think at the same time, uh, you know, it's really hard to backcourt features. But when it comes to security, I think it's got to be a yes, because I think that right now the majority of chains are on V4. Yeah, it's like tied to the SDK 45 line dependency. So, yeah, that is. Yeah, OK. I would agree. Like, I think we should extend it a bit. Um, okay. um, and I mean, then as a as a meta comment, like the the version thing is hard. Yeah. These I, these, these backports also affect a ton of other teams too. Like for interchain tests, we have to maintain branches for all of the different IBC versions. I think we're supporting four, five, six, and seven right now. Yeah, I mean, those are the like the same versions that uh, like IBC Go is also supporting. So I guess like extending the V four support like a bit longer would not be too much more of a pain. Uh, I guess the question is how long, but I think just given looking at like those stats, it seems like a reasonable thing to do. From is like there, do you have a similar stat with assets under management or number of transactions or what have you? Because if you're going to support V4, it looks like you should support V3 as well, right? But this number is not, not clear yeah. that it is real. Yeah, um, that would be definitely interesting to check the, like, uh, yeah, the assets secured through each of these chains, but I don't have those stats to hand right now are corresponding to the versions. But also um, moving from V3 to V4 is less of an ask from chain developers and moving from V4 to V5 because of the underlying SDK dependency. Yeah. I'm pretty sure the upgrade from three to four is like pretty trivial. That's right. correct. Okay. So the fact that they have not upgraded means they don't actually care at the moment, right? Yeah, basically. <laughs> no, I mean, there's clearly other reasons. Uh, you know, things happen. I don't know, different priorities. Um, don't want to make a generalization, but. I mean, they're busy implementing features for their own chain, probably, and don't have time to upgrade the SDK at the same time. Yeah, but three to four is not the SDK. Oh, three to four. Okay, yeah. sorry. But yeah, four to five, it's a bigger ask because you need to go to the 46 line. But yeah, um, moving on. Uh, the next ask is, uh, well, Carlos will mention, but um, Serdal's been working on um, JSON encoding for ICA. Um, and I'm in contact with a couple of developers who could could possibly test the feature, but if anyone else is here and interested and would 
be happy to help with testing it out before it goes in the release. Yeah, so Cosm Wasm developers can contact uh, contact me, and then I'll give the instructions on how to test it out. You can change the Telegram to yours. I didn't want to put it there without permission. But no, it, it's okay. <laughs> uh, you can put both of ours. <laughs> <laughs> cool. You you know these people more than me. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. So, where is your Telegram? It's, uh, it's RDTRK. Mm, sorry, is R D T R K? Is right? Correct. Yeah. yeah. All right. Cool. Thanks, Susanna. Thank you, sir. From protocol and engineering updates. Uh, so last iteration, we released uh, two new versions. So version six point two. This was um, a request from Fmos. Um, uh, and it includes the backport of the support for um, uh, authorizations to, for transfer, and also an improvement on that feature that uh, Evmos implemented. Um, that was to add the support for unlimited spend spending. So yeah, we released that one, and then we released also last Friday 7.1 uh, with the local host client and the feature to add um, a state entity to track the total amount of tokens uh, in escrow. Um, yeah, here, shout out to Justin, uh, who was working, uh, yeah, uh, who was working uh, long hours on Thursday to get the end-to-end the -end tests for local host uh, passing in interchain tests. So, so thanks a lot uh, for the effort. Um, yeah, so those releases are out. Um, now we are working a bit uh, on the next two releases. Uh, 7.2, uh, that's the one that we want to include, where we want to include the, the, the Western client, the support for Western clients uh, uh, that Strange Love and Composable have been working on. Uh, we had already a couple of sessions um, walking through the code, and we've been gathering some, some feedback. Um, and I will, uh, yeah, in the next days, I will start sharing and discussing that with, with Steve and, and Blas. Um, yeah, so yeah, moving forward with that. Um, yeah, as Serdar mentioned, uh, he has been working on the JSON encoding support uh, for ICA packet data. Uh, and he's also working on um, uh, on the ADR 8 middleware implementation for, for Cosm Wasm. Um, maybe Serdar, if you want to give also details about that one. Yeah, sure. So yeah, I'm also working on the ADR 8 middleware implementation. Um, it is Diff, a, a lot different than IBC hooks uh, in that it's a stateless middleware. So that means it doesn't even register as a SDK module, but that makes wiring up uh, very simple. And uh, it does come with like, um, along with an update to IBC, it does come with a couple of interfaces that any IBC module can implement and become callback compatible. So that means you don't have to, you know, specifically build it towards um, any, any IBC module, but as long as you implement a couple interfaces, then um, that module can also use, um, if you just wire it up, if wire the middleware up, then that module can also use callbacks. Um, yeah, um, so I'm, I am going to be starting to test this as well um, in, the, in the coming days. So maybe uh, the same Cosmosm developer that the developers that helped me test JSON encoding can also participate in uh, trying, out, uh, trying out this feature as well. Oh, thanks. And then, yeah, uh, we're putting a lot of effort on V8 uh, and the work of channel credibility, both on the spec and the implementation side. Um, yeah, Aditya opening uh, changes, uh, APRs with uh, updates to the spec, yeah, and the team working on the implementation to try to finish the, um, the happy path uh, handshake um, at the end of, for, yeah, for the end of this month. Um, and then, yeah, recently, and thanks to, to Jacob, uh, the work for upgrading to SDK 50 has also started. Um, so, yeah, thanks a lot, Jacob, for opening the PR. And yeah, we will uh, probably start reviewing that uh, maybe in a couple of weeks. Uh, uh, but in the meantime, hopefully, Mark or, or some other folks for the SDK team can also help there to, to speed that up. Right. 
Um, I'm, yeah, just just to give you a status on it, I'm I'm basically like grinding on it and trying to learn the SDK 50 style. Um, and I do think that in a couple of weeks it should be ready for review. That makes sense to me. Cool, great. Thanks a lot. Yeah. And has one, Marco one question. contacted you? Sorry, about maybe. SDK SDK 0 0.5 update, like Jacob. Uh, what about it? Like ha has has like Marco and other people from the SDK team contacted you about it because they they did also offer to help with the uh, migration uh, the upgrade as well. So I'm, I was assuming that they would coordinate with you. Oh, um, I haven't spoken to them about it okay. other than actually in the comments on the PR. But uh, okay. I'll ping Marco after this call. Cool. And Jack, do you have a question as well? Yeah, just on the upcoming roadmap, one thing that I'm starting to see a lot of uh, market need for is the client dependencies work that Bo had started. I was wondering after the channel upgradability work, is that something that's in scope for the team? Should we try to find some outside developers to work on that? Because there's starting to be a lot of roll up IBC work and the roll-up clients are going to need to depend on other clients and many different architectures that we're looking at. Yeah, um, I've been, oh, yeah, unmuted. I've been reviewing Bo's work. Um, we've, um, we've got it down with V7 to a fairly minimal set of changes. Um, I think, you know, it, uh, Bo hasn't responded to me on my latest messages yet, but I think, um, with v7 already in the work it should be relatively simple like the main the main difficulty that v7 doesn't support yet is passing in the different client stores but everything else should be um able to be done within the client state itself um so we're already working on it from the spec side um so yeah Thanks. yeah i guess like i'm trying to get at like if I have a feature that I'd like to land in like October, is that something where we can anticipate that transitive client work being ready to go? Or is that like, would we need to accelerate that in a different way? Yeah, I think it's easier. I think it would be easier to push forward if there's like a um, actual user on the other side of it. Um, cause right now it's I have a, close I, I have a use case I can talk to you about privately, Aditya. Okay. Then that's, that's more useful to help iterate over the actual design. So yeah, yeah. let's talk privately. Great. Cool. All right. Uh, any more questions or comments from about this update? Okay. If not, uh, then updates. From the relayer teams, um, Hermes, if Luca is here, maybe. Yeah. Hey. Uh, so we released the 1.5.1 .1, uh, version. Uh, send you the change logs here. And uh, we're planning on uh, the next release for, I think, the end of the month. Mm -hmm. We'll be resuming some. Uh, the, the work on the channel gradeability now that the specs are finalized, if I understood correctly. Yeah, okay, cool. Um, yeah. Thanks. And from the relay team. Uh, I, think, I think the most substantial changes since the last call are we had a few fixes and optimizations on order channels that we figured out when Neutron launched. Um, and then we also had some fixes around our Prometheus metrics. And then as Carlos mentioned, we did add support for the localhost client. That's still in a PR going through code review, but as soon as that's finished, we'll end up getting a tag release out also. Do, do you have like a timeline or for, for that? Uh... Um, hopefully we can get that merged by the end of this week and then maybe shoot for getting a release out next week. Mm -hmm. and then mm -hmm. I imagine that would end up being 2.4. Mm -hmm. Great. 
Perfect. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Um, then uh, any other topics? Um, so client dependencies. Susanna, I think you. No, I just were, I just wrote that in so that there was like a record. Yeah. Of True. That. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, any other topic that we should discuss today? Yeah, I guess the, the, the client dependencies thing, um, especially if it's a lower lift, like the sooner we can get that in, the better. Uh, so, you know, happy to just chat with folks about that. And uh, Bo, if you want a hand, we might be able to shift some strange love resources that way. Cool. Yeah. Um, is there like a specific or I guess you can talk about it later uh, or another time mm -hmm. if, if, if anybody wouldn't mind just sort of dialing into what that work is in a general sense the client yeah, dependencies sure. work dude awesome yeah Thank so uh, let's say you have a roll up on Ethereum that rollup is committing state roots into the Ethereum uh, Merkle tree. And you want to be able to prove things about the state of the rollup. Let's say you have an ETH2 light client. You can have the rollup light client have a dependency on the ETH2 light client. And you can check the ETH2 light client for inclusion of the rollup state hash in the Ethereum hash to prove finality. And then you can go into the rollup client and prove inclusion of packet data from the rollup environment. Instead of packaging them together into one client and reusing a lot of data, this is a much cleaner architecture. It allows for composing together different forms of cryptographic veri verification as a way of authorizing IBC packets. Thank Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah, actually, it does. Cool. All right. Um, anything else? Any any questions or comments? So I guess in this, I'm just new to it. It's really interesting. The client. Defenders. So it would be things like like exposing helper functions for like verifying like uh, like membership or something like this. Uh, I, I, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm new, so I wasn't there in the earlier discussions. Okay, cool. Pretty cool. Great. Then if there's nothing else, then we can yeah finish a bit uh, early today. All right. Thank you, everyone. Sweet. Thanks for joining. Thanks, Thanks, everybody. Peace out. Thank you. Bye. Bye, Thank everybody. Bye-bye.